Right, so in the field of farming, especially in the area of greenhouse farming, there are different ways that farmers adopt to, you know, produce their vegetables. In this farm, there are two different types that I have seen. I've seen, you know, the greenhouse with covered floor, and where we found ourselves is a greenhouse with the beds covered, but the floor itself left, you know, open. I mean, you can see the sand or the soil left open. However, in this space, the farmer tells me he was adopting or he wanted to test, you know, another style. <laughs> and and I, I don't know which kind of heart he has to do that. But he went to buy black soil to produce this sweet pepper. We have the red, we have the yellow, and then the, the, the orange, green, okay, the, the orange color. Yeah. But something happened, and that's why I'm doing this video to enlighten you. I'm sure you've heard about nematodes, all right? How does it come about? What are the symptoms that you have to see on your plant to tell you your, your plant is suffering from this disease? Famani, thanks for joining me. You're welcome. So in this particular greenhouse, yes. tell me what happened here. Okay, so um, I earlier on told you I had bacteria. Yes. I, wrote, I had tomatoes here. So the grow, the grow bags I had were infected. And trying to get a good grow bags, I wasn't. So I decided, okay, then let me try the soil because I had not done soil in the greenhouse. So let me try the soil in the greenhouse and see how it goes by. So I imported, I bought black soil, brought it over here. Ordinarily, you would advise that when you bring it in, I mean, you test and see if there are any pathogens or stuff. But I said, let me take the chances and see. So I didn't disinfect, I didn't band or anything. I didn't fumigate. We form the rows just like we have on the open field. Yeah. We have our drips, we have our trellis system. And then we planted the, the bell peppers. And they, they started nicely, they were packing. I had um, a nematode suppressant, but I used all right. But halfway through the season, we realized that we are starting to experience um, the nematodes in the plants. And nematodes are pathogens. They, they affect the roots of the plants. So when you take the root out, you see like a knot, it forms like knots on the roots. Okay. And when these things happen like that, it affects the plant's uptake of nutrients and water. So with time, you realize that the plants, the, either the, your yields are going to reduce, the plant doesn't look so healthy, or it will just kill off the plant, it will wilt as well, yes. So that was one of the things I, I have noticed over here, which is, um, as you can see, right. there are some spaces of plants which have water been taken yes. out. And then there was another one, Fusarium. Mm. I also noticed there's Fusarium as well. It also affects what we would say, um, the, kind of like the veins of humans, yes, the xylem and it blocks it kind of. And it's also the plants also not able to uptake the nutrients and the water. So then they also start watering. So this is something I I experienced, mm. yes, with using the soil that I imported. Mm. So probably if I would want to still go with it, I would have to fumigate my soil to try and kill or suppress whatever I'm, pathogens are in it before I plant. If not, within the season, you start to experience some of these things. You mentioned you, you imported the soil. Where did you import it from? As in, we, we bought it from a different location okay. into this place. So right. it's not from here. I okay. think we bought them from somewhere along the Dodra Road. Right. Uh, yes, Athenia Road or something. Okay. Yes. Okay. So in that case, um, what do you do to a plant that has, is affected with nematode? Do you uproot and throw it away? Or you can leave it to bed because I can see some of the fruits are actually yeah. coming. Yes, yeah, some of them are. So, uh, well, it's just like what COVID, how COVID happened. Yeah. Some people get it and they just die within yes. a few days. Some people responded better to it as well. So, some plants are affected, some mm -hmm. are still thriving. Mm. Yes. So, it's, I, I think it will probably more localized around this side mm -hmm. because I've lost more of the plants on this side. Right. Now. Yeah, that place. Okay. But what I'm do doing right now is we're building our time, try to get as many of the fruits as possible. And then when we are not getting much, we terminate, fumigate the whole place if we have to. Or I'll probably switch back to the hydroponics and um, bring cocoa mm, protein and mm. then we, we continue. Okay. That. So what's the best way of eradicating um, so that it will not move from here to the other so, greenhouses? So one thing is that Mostly, I share the greenhouses for individuals. Okay. So one person that comes in here stays in here and mm. doesn't work in the other greenhouse. Mm. Yes. Secondly, we have the foot baths at the yes. entrance. Yes. 
with disinfectant in, so you have to disinfect your right. footwear when you come in. Okay. Tools that are used over here you cannot don't be move used to the other place. Okay. So if you use a secretary here or shears or whatever it is you use here, mm. you make sure that it remains. They remain in here. here. It doesn't move into the other place. And then you disinfect them occasionally as well. You wash them, disinfect them, dry them, put them nicely in the toolbox. So that at least when you come there sanitary, you can use them over there. Those are some of the measures that mm. we can we employ over here so that we don't end up spreading it across. I see. Yes. Even though the other greenhouse is not practicing the same thing, but the pest can actually multiply itself um, there. Yes, because, I mean, as you're stepping here, you're moving around. Yes. yes. If, it's, if it has to do with pest and all that, uh, one of the... Um, the pests that really worry peppers is uh, anthrips. Okay. You have them here, you come and work in here, it could go on your skin, in mm, your, shirt. your shirt. You move into the other greenhouse. Okay. You've introduced move, it you've there. You've introduced it over there. Okay. So we try to keep, if it's one person mm. that's working, except for days that we need a lot of hands over here, mm. then we know that this day all of you are going to work mm. over mm. here. But then we watch, we monitor, and then you see, you see, we have these ones we use to monitor. So what are this? Uh, these are sticky traps. Okay. So if you see, you can see a there couple a lot of, of insects, insects on it. Okay. So you come, you scout, and then you say, okay, so this is the kind of insects that are in this house. I see. Then it informs you on the, what is in the, the actions action to, to, take. to take. Yes. Okay. We have this one, and then we have the yellow one. Okay. Well. Yes. Okay, this one so as these, well. Yes. So these are all measures that we use to monitor and then we plan appropriately for Right. Yeah. So these things, do you change them? Uh, yes, we change them. How often? Uh, well, mostly we change them through the cycle. Okay. So we have a number of them. Being, right. And then after every cycle, we just... You remove all remove of it and, and you bring, bring new, new ones. ones in. Yeah. Okay. Because you would want to have a fair idea of what's all right. Yes. Here, yes. And the quantity or the number you see yes. lets you know that, oh, okay, there are a lot of... The level of... Pest in the air. Mm. So, yes, that informs you. And the house flies... Yes, the house flies are coming here. So what did you put on the, the board? Is it a glue or something? No, these are made um, from... Uh, it's, it's a, so um, this is a biological way of tr tackling insects, I, uh, pest control. So they are made from the company sticky like this. If right. you stick your hand, uh -huh. you realize it uh -huh. sticks. So once the insect gets onto it, it gets stuck. <laughs> and it's not able to fly away again. Okay. Yes, yeah, so that, ah, that is how it is. I and see. the color is, is a color code. And there are right. some that are more attracted to the mm. blue. Some of the pests are attracted to the mm. blue than the yellow. Yes. Are so this produced blue. in Ghana? Um, no. 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 Yes, okay. these are important. Right. Yes. All right. So that's it. If you are a farmer and you don't have this in your greenhouse, can, that, can this also be introduced? On the open um, field? Yes, it can You're be sure? introduced on the open field okay. as well. At least... The, the, as you're scouting and as you see, it gives you an idea of mm. what pests are mm. moving Covering within, around. around. Yes. Okay. So, and then based on, as I said, the quantities you see, you know that, okay, the infestation is a lot. Mm. There are lots of them over mm. there. Yes. So it can still be employed. Mm. Yes. Sometimes they even come in a band. Mm -hmm. So it's like a long strip that is just moving. I've gone to a farm yeah. where they, yes, it's a solution. Okay. So it's in a bottle, and a, a cut bottle, but... The solution is there. So when they see and they try yes, to it attracts them, you yes, go and then you, you get yes. stuck. So yes. that's it. Um, very short but insightful. If you are a farmer and you intend going to buy black soil from elsewhere to introduce into your greenhouse or to produce any vegetable on your farm, please double check, which is conduct soil testing to also see if there is any form of disease or any form of uh, treatment that needs to be done to the soil before you go ahead and introduce your plant. If not, you would make, um, <laughs> you'll be a shocked. Grave mistake. You know, and that's what Farmani has experienced. How many farmer, uh, plant population do we have here? I'm um, same 800. Same 800, but yeah. I'm sure the We've harvest would with, have gone yes, down. It's gone down. It's, it's yes. gone down, and you don't want to yes. um, lose a lot of money. Yes. I believe this has been very insightful. A tip you wouldn't have known, but for the Ghanaian farmer, you have known today take into consideration pay attention and of course today if you don't know we have a trap that you can use to catch insects if you're a farmer you can catch insects in your greenhouse and of course on your open field this gives you a fair idea of how many insects are hovering around and how to tackle them of course at every cycle at, at a, after every production cycle you have to dispose them and buy new ones. My name is Anjana and this has been The Ghanaian Farmer. Get interactive on our social media pages, 
Facebook, LinkedIn, Instagram, and on YouTube, The Guardian Farmer. Get in touch with him on Instagram as well, Farmer Nee. Until then, thank you so thank much. You. And, uh, you know, my heart goes out to you. Sorry, sorry. <laughs> thank you. Bye-bye. <laughs>